Hi, uh, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editorial Director of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. I'm here with Jonathan Davis, who is the Executive Vice President of Semi. Jonathan, what's the state of the semiconductor manufacturing industry today? The industry is doing great. Of course, we've rebound uh, and grew 148 percent last year, and we're seeing continued growth this year with continued uh, capacity expansion and capital spending around the world, uh, predominantly driven by uh, NAND flash memory and foundry investment. Uh, we're seeing uh, continued growth in the semiconductor uh, equipment and the materials space. Is there any growth coming from outside the traditional areas? Sure. Those, those are uh, great areas, interesting areas for semi-members, and you'll see those on display at Semicon West. I concentrate primarily in the semiconductor space with my new emphasis. 2011 this year, we'll see the semiconductor industry cross the 300 billion mark for the first time in history. Uh, for capital spending, we're seeing uh, continued investment uh, after a tremendous growth last year of about 148 percent, taking the worldwide equipment spending to something on the order of $43 billion. We'll see that uh, uh, spending growth continued, albeit at a slightly more moderate pace. As one analyst said, it's steady as she goes, and I think that's really a, a uh, opportune view. Uh, we expect uh, continued growth in the semiconductor market for another uh, uh, three years or so. From your perspective, what's the outlook on die stacking? So there's really three main trends that uh, the whole industry is focused on. One is the whole nature of 3D, both uh, device structure as well as packaging, and of course uh, EUV, a next generation lithography, and then uh, the big conversation about the 450 uh, wafer transition possibilities. So those are the three topics that I think uh, dominate the hot topics along with the other prevailing uh, technology improvement trends that we'll see uh, around Semicon West. How real are any of these at this point? Well, I think, I think there's quite a bit of focus and activity in all of these areas. Certainly the, uh, the 3D device structures is happening now, and that has implications, uh, massive implications for materials as well as process technology. Uh, the 450 uh, wafer consideration, I think we've seen a inflection in the tone of that discussion though much more needs to be done on the collaboration front to uh, bring this into an organized transition if it's going to happen. And uh, on the EUV, there's uh, big technology challenges, and many of those will be discussed at Semicon West. Is the industry still pushing heavily into China, or is it now starting to move into other places in the globe? They seem to have captured the headlines for a long time. Well, clearly it's a global industry, and we're seeing manufacturing uh, occurring around the world. It's uh, very encouraging to see uh, Intel, Global Foundry, Samsung, America, all expanding here in the United States as well. But uh, for sure, investments are continuing in Asia, China, and around the world. What are some of the top hurdles that the industry is facing, and how do we get around those? I think the technology hurdles uh, are there. Innovation is always the focus of advancement in this industry, and there are many brilliant minds working on these prevailing issues, 3D, as well as the EUV and other uh, activities to, to make chips cheaper, more powerful, cooler, more pervasive. What are, you, what are you seeing as the big drivers? What are the trends that are changing and how is that affecting what's going on on the manufacturing side? One of the interesting trends that I see is that consumer electronics are no longer a luxury. They are a necessity. Uh, and we're seeing the pervasiveness of, uh, of consumer electronics everywhere, and the, the uh, rising middle class is uh, fully adopting these new products and technologies. I don't know anybody that I work with that, that leaves their work home at night. We all have our mobile devices and continue to work. And, um, you know, I think the industry owes a lot to Steve Jobs for this sort of recognition of the uh, integrative aspects of silicon and human touch. And that's becoming pervasive, not only in Apple products, but other products. And because of that, um, that user experience side of silicon technology, uh, we're seeing much more interest in the processing from the upstream companies, the systems people, the contract manufacturers. So you'll see um, more fabulous companies, more 
system design companies at Simicon West this year. What was the impact of the earthquake and the tsunami in Japan on the industry? So I think all of us were so deeply impacted by the harrowing images of deep human tragedy as a result of the earthquake and tsunami. And uh, our, our thoughts continue uh, for our colleagues and friends in Japan. And uh, I'd first like to thank all the folks that contributed to the semi-relief efforts. In a very short couple of weeks, we raised over $50,000, which uh, were handed over to the Red Cross for tsunami release efforts. But uh, beyond the human story, the industry story is really a remarkable story of recovery and resilience. And I think by most accounts now, the industry will be fully back to pre-quake production levels uh, very soon. And it's a phenomenal testament to uh, uh, the Japan uh, technologists, engineers, and industry to so quickly, and the supply chain, I should say, to uh, quickly resume that production. Um, a lot was learned from the previous Iwate quake. Uh, Fujitsu Semiconductor has uh, credited their disaster planning experience and uh, their rapid recovery. Um, you know, Japan is a, a $200 billion electronics, components, and device production area. Uh, Japan is the world's largest installed capacity uh, for semiconductor manufacturing. It's a market for some four to five billion dollars of front end equip uh, of semiconductor equipment and another nine billion dollars of semiconductor materials. So it is a vibrant and uh, healthy region, and it's open for business. So we're we're quite pleased to see the recovery that's occurred in Japan. Jonathan Davis, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Ed.